everyone and welcome to uh, this Forex webinar with Ninja Trader, not with Ninja Trader themselves, using the Ninja Trader platform and our quantum Ninja Trader tools. So apologies about that. I think we've, this is only the second one we've done of this one, so I'm still sort of getting used to it. Before we start, can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer, which I know many of you have seen many, many times before, but please, um, it can't be stressed too many times. This can be a very risky business. Please, please don't ever think of using money or use money that you cannot afford to lose. So I'll just take that down. And as you can see, hopefully you'll be able to see my Ninja Trader, which is Ninja 7, one of my profiles. David is uh, uh, giving me his thumbs up. Usually we sit sort of at right angles to each other, but we've had a, a reconfiguration of the desk. So he's uh, he's opposite me and I can just sort of see him peeking through my uh, my monitors. So, as I said, this is uh, in this particular session, which we've added to our series of, of webinars. We uh, we really wanted to give. Um, the uh, the Ninja Trader platform um, and you know a dedicated session on its own and obviously with with our tools and this is why we've added um, uh, this this particular webinar we are back later today back for day trading with the indices and of course we were here on Tuesday where at about 8:30 uh, just after the London Open where we tend to look more at the MT5 platform although David um, he is a, a much bigger ninja trader user than i am and and he uses ninja 8 right so that's the explanation for that because i know some of you have not been uh this may be your first time uh, joining us the um the purpose as i said of these sessions is to look at uh, the forex market particularly now as we're just coming out of um you know not coming out of but we've had uh, london and europe and now we've got uh, the new york session coming up uh, the, uh, fairly fairly soon that's before the actual markets open and it's always fascinating that whatever sentiment whatever has been happening in one session how the markets can simply do uh, one on 180 degree turn um when uh, new york suddenly comes on board it is the deepest um Session, deepest liquidity. It's a session with the deepest liquidity because obviously we have three major uh, financial centers open. And uh, sometimes as new traders don't perhaps appreciate because the marketing for uh, forex trading is on the basis that you can trade anytime, anywhere and any place, which you can and you can enter at any time in the 24 hour cycle based on, on where you live. You can uh, place orders on an intraday basis, on a longer term basis. And I've actually got some trades that I want to share with you, which I'm in at the moment um, where I've got a little basket of, of of trades because I wanted to go in for not an intraday basis but on a on a maybe maybe days I'm not sure it's going to be weeks we'll have to see how they uh, pan out and it's fascinating how I think yesterday morning the whole little the whole little basket was up something like over 200 pips and come the afternoon sessions because I had um I'm actually in three uh, Euro CAD, dollar CAD and CAD, because I'm in three Canadian pairs, because we had uh, very important Canadian news, which I knew was coming up anyway. Um, we had the interest rate decision and we also had uh, uh, we had the statement. Um, the whole the whole basket just sort of took a complete dive south, as, as it were. But that's just part and parcel of um, what to expect particularly if you are going to you, know, you want to trade the slower time frames or you want to hold positions over a number of days and there's all sorts of other factors with holding on to these longer term uh, positions first of all is there's the rollover and this particular basket is actually in my favor so when my broker sends me a statement at the end of the day uh, i can see that i'm actually earning for a change usually it's uh, it's it's the other way around so that's something else you have to factor in because it can be a cost of your trading as well and what I also want to cover is when you are in these in these sorts of trades um, not only do you have to be aware of the fundamental news which may upend maybe one or the two pairs in your little basket um, but also how the sentiment can change as I said from one uh, session to 
another and it really is uh, the whole basket is, is is structured in in such a way it's it's very much um uh uh, bias towards a positive market sentiment. For example, there's a, there's a buy on uh, the Aussie yen and the Canadian yen, and there's a sell on the Euro CAD and the dollar CAD as well. So the other thing you have to bear in mind is also, uh, are you hedging yourself? And I'm not. I'm I'm actually buying the Canadian, and and I'm buying the Aussie, both in the Aussie yen and in the Euro Aussie because my view is I've taken a view I've looked at the overall market and I think you know what I think we are still positive you know despite the volatility uh, the equity markets and market sentiment generally seems to be more skewed towards a risk on uh, bias as it were and I suppose really it also encapsulates the importance of not only looking at the technical picture, obviously there were all sorts of reasons why I went into these particular pairs, which I'll cover later. In fact, I used our heat map indicator and um, I've written a little bit about it on both my blog and on my Forex page. Um, but it also brought in the other elements that we have to be aware of when uh, trading, not just on an intraday basis, but on these longer term time frames, where not only is it fundamental news, as I said, we had important Canadian news yesterday, which uh, upended some of my, my positions, not to the extent that I'd be taken up, but I knew that the chances were that there would be a pullback uh, from the very positive position that I had in the morning. But it also, um, ex also, um, uh, um, includes the importance of looking at the broader market because the Aussie, uh, the Aussie yen, as we've talked about before, is a proxy for sentiment, a proxy for risk, and it's also tied to what is happening in China. So, in fact, the the, the basket not only is it's a technical, there's a technical picture, there's the fundamental picture, there's the sentiment picture, and there's also uh, individual currencies there which are tied to particular markets or different parts of the world and with the Canadian obviously we have the oil and um, you know I obviously take a look pay very close attention to the oil price because if the oil price is going up then the chance you know the likelihood is my Canadian is doing my Canadian pairs are doing you know pretty well and everything is explained and before we start I just want to bring this to your attention because you may not have seen it before everything is explained in the books that you can find up on Amazon but what we've done with the with the Forex books in particular is we have put them together into what we call the complete Forex trading library which is nine nine ninety nine dollars David nine ninety nine dollars uh, it is the the, the the digital version, but it brings everything together. So if you like, my, my positions are a reflection of everything that we cover in these books. Now, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to pass over to David and then we'll have a look at some charts, not only my charts, but also David's charts, because he's been looking at charts on an intraday basis. So um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's perfectly all right. Alice says that all right? Perfectly all right with me. Um, a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. I hope it's a bit warmer where you are than where we are because um, it's freezing here right now. So, um, But then it is the middle of winter for us, so it's hardly a great surprise, not, uh, not a shock news. Um, if you do have any questions, if this is your first time uh, on one of these sessions, you're more than welcome to join us. And if you do have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. If they're short questions, longer questions, we'll be happy to answer on air for you. Um, just uh, running my eye over uh, Anna's workspace there, just a couple of things to highlight, really. First of all, the top left on the dollar CAD, um, a, just a nice example, something we talk about a lot on the volatility indicator. It was triggered there. Um, it, it doesn't always happen. There is, n there is never an always in trading. But what the volatility indicator triggers is exactly what you expect. It triggers the view that volatility is in the market. The little purple arrows top and bottom are telling you that volatility has arrived. Uh, that's confirmed with the amount of volume. The market makers are participating. It's an indication of the fact that price action has moved outside the average true range. And hence the indicator triggers because what the average true range is really looking at is giving you a sense of 
where the price action is average and if it moves outside that range the expected range for any particular time frame we're on the three minute here if the price action moves outside what is the norm in other words as measured by the the uh, atr then the indicator is triggered the nice thing with it is triggered in real time and the reason that we get these trap moves is because the market makers are participating whenever there's volatility you can be assured the market makers are either participating in full or alternatively they are standing on the sidelines which will all be reflected in the volume associated and your expectation is that the market at the very least is going to pause may congest may indeed fully reverse as it's done here and the reason for that is very simple in that when the market moves fast our emotion is triggered to jump in it's a natural reaction you see a fast moving market you want to participate you think there's easy money to be made because the market's moving very quickly it is a natural reaction it's a natural emotion to feel and we jump in what happens the market then pauses which creates pressure in terms of the emotion building because we're not sure which way the market's now going to go and we start to regret the panic the the this snap decision that we made, which was made on instinct and emotion rather than logic. Apologies about that for the silence. Um, can, can you actually hear me? Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Melanie. Um, I will explain what happened there because it was quite funny. Um, someone, someone came to the door to deliver, and in the ensuing scramble to go and attack the uh, delivery man, uh, one of the dogs managed to rip my cable out of the uh, of the PC, so my audio went completely. So apologies about that. Um, completely lost my train of thought now. Where were we with the vol with the volatility indicator? So there we are. That's the expectation: is that um, what we're looking at there is a potential for a reversal, which we saw there. And just bringing in some other aspects there, which are now starting to to figure. We can start to see the volumes building uh, as we move into the US session. So we've got an increase in volume. We're literally just moving into it now. We're two minutes into the US session. And in addition, or the, the move there has really just retraced back to the volume point of control, which is the yellow dash line, into that very heavy area of volume. That is the greatest area of volume, as denoted with the volume point of control, which is the fulcrum of the market. So several reasons for the market that uh, it's just retraced to that level. Above that, you've got some heavy resistance in the red dash line. That's on the accumulation distribution indicator. The width of that line is denoting the strength of that resistance region, which is purely based on price. So you're looking at support and resistance really from two metrics, if you will. On the right-hand side, you've got the volume point of control, which is based on volume, price, and time which gives a sense of when markets are approaching areas of heavy uh, congestion in terms of volume and where there are lighter uh, areas up and down the histogram. But equally with the uh, uh, accumulation distribution indicator, it is based on price, conventional price support and resistance. And there you can see it's hit that region. So there's lots of reasons for congestion around this area. And then you're looking at the, the, the business of, well, if I'm going to take a position on this, what am I looking at? You're now looking at the various levels, possibly for a move away in terms of break away from a congestion zone. And you've got a decent ceiling in place above at one spot, 32, 22, maybe a little bit up to 24, and down to the floor at 32.10 as a potential opportunity for an intraday scalping opportunity as a breakaway trade. Um, just, just pop that one back down, Donnie, sorry. Yeah, that's it. Just to, um, that's it on the Renko. And again, the indicators work in a very similar way. You can use, um, as you see, you've got the trend monitor there. You've got the trend dots. You've got the accumulation distribution, which is acting as support and resistance. You've got that very strong platform in at 132.10, which has acted as support so far. The price has, has held there. It hasn't broken through. Still bearish as signaled by the trend monitor. And you've got the various levels of, of price resistance up and down the chart there as well with the uh, trend dots working in tandem with the trend monitor. The trend dots will always transition first. They work very close to price action, but they work really well with the Renko in conjunction with the trend monitor. The trend monitor will transition more slowly. As you can see there over to the left on the Renko, we had the, the 
the reversal, the little pullback. We had the rally, then we had a pullback into a congestion phase. The trend dots changed color. They went into red, then they went into a little bit of blue and gray. But the trend monitor only transitioned to a darker blue. It never actually transitioned into a darker red or even into a full-blown uh, reversal from bullish to bearish, which is what we expect to see. So the trend monitor takes a more considered view. The trend dots work very close to the price action, but they work brilliantly together. And finally, just down onto the bottom right on the CSI, what I've been looking at particularly, um, and I did a quick up, did a no, it's fine. I did a quick update on the in the forum VPA Traders Forum. Um, the pound's been under the cosh this morning, and pretty much universally across the the pound complex. Um, I've been look following the the uh, the pound Aussie. You can see there the Aussie's been rising very strongly, the blue line. And continues to do so in the 60-minute time frame, and certainly the pound has been, as I say, has been under the cosh, been under the hammer all morning. Um, what's interesting also with the uh, with the dollar CAD at, at the moment is um, it's really not going anywhere very much. I had a quick look at uh, what the what the news is. Unlike yesterday, um, there's uh, there's there's a lot of uh, tier two. Uh, news I think for the US not done it, nothing for Canada as I said yesterday but I knew when I, I decided to take a short position in uh, the dollar CAD that uh, I would be facing one of these um, you know um, important uh, bits of fundamental news and obviously with the the Canadian in the pair there's also uh, you have to consider what is happening with oil particularly more so in the CAD yen as well as the dollar cat as well and also this is the 60 minute csi and we can see here this is a turning down of the of, of the dollar which is the, which is the red line and up until um uh, really until the start of this session the the canadians been uh, rising uh, you know quite nicely this is sort of ticking down there so this is the 60 minute one um when these two lines sort of travel in the more or less in the same direction what is also telling us is that the, the likelihood is that the, the pair that they refer to are going to be in uh, in some kind of congestion uh, phase and certainly not going uh, very not going very far and over here is a dollar index this is the 30 minute dollar index the, the, the dollar is is falling it is uh, being sold uh, how strongly um, difficult to say as I said this is the 30 minute chart but not necessarily strongly against the uh, uh, the dollar uh, against the Canadian so it's really a case of choose your your time horizon choose your you know how long do you want to stay in uh, how long do you think you want to stay in a in in a trade are you looking just for an intra intraday uh, trading scalping uh, short-term position or are you going to be like me you're perhaps you're looking for something that is going to you know you're going to hold for maybe one or two days or you know the the trading week as it were I don't tend to hold my my trades over a weekend it's a long time since uh, since I've done that come Friday I like to look at them I think mm, no because the weekends are so can be so unpredictable these days um, and this but on an intraday basis, I still monitor them. I still see what's happening on the faster time frames because they tell me where I'm going to run into difficulties. And what I use particularly for that is I look at levels. Levels are key. We, we, David always and I say that this market is all about levels, levels and flow. And that flow, the flow of money, uh, in the markets is either going into, uh, you know, wants to be protected into safe havens or it's looking for risk and it's looking for a return. And what we do as traders, we are always looking to anticipate whether they, it's going to be a risk on or risk off. And, you know, if we understand market sentiment, how these money, how the money flow actually works in and out of individual currencies, in and out of currency pairs, as I said, this will help you enormously. It, it gives, gives a three dimensional picture to the technical, to the chart itself, which is why the book we call uh, the three dimensional approach to forex trading, because it's not just the technical, it's the fundamental, the related markets. I probably say there's a fourth element now, which is the political one. Um, this is the 60 minute chart. And all I have on here is I have the, uh, the volume, I have the price, 
and I have these levels. These are really important. These are my Camarilla levels. I don't use Fibonacci. We, we've developed our own indicator to give levels some kind of hierarchy. This is in addition to the uh, accumulation distribution and the uh, the VPOC because this is the S4. This is a uh, the fourth level on the Camarilla is, is, is very important because when price goes through that strongly with volume, it is considered to be a potential breakaway or a breakout. But it can also hold as a very strong support, uh, support line. What often happens, price will then bounce off the S4 or bounce from the, the R4, as we can see, is up there. And often when it breaks through the S4 and the R4, it will often go back and retest it. But if it's broken through, that will then, the R, on the S4, that will provide a really quite a strong uh, resistance line, as, uh, as it were. Now, from my perspective, as I'm short this pair, this is now, in, this is the key level for me because it's, it's sort of stuck here at 30, is it 32.10, David? Around 30, yeah. it's around 32.10. So for this position to carry on in the direction that I'd like it to continue, that's the level that <coughs> has to be breached. Now, what we've done with this indicator. Apologies. And it's just having a coughing fit. Sorry, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit sporadic today. I do apologise. Just to pick up on uh, what Anna was saying with regard to the Camarilla. Not only are the levels important per se in terms of when they reach these regions, um, but moreover, what they also provide is a, a target for two things. A target for the potential on the trade. So, for example, here where we're at the S4, if that does break and hold below, then you're looking at a move potentially to the S5 and S6 because unlike many other indicators, we've actually developed this with six levels. So below that, as you can see there, we have the S5 and the S6, and the S4 is absolutely key. The region in the middle there between the R1 and the S1, that's what we call the buffer zone. That's when the market's trading in a, in a tight range. It tends to be oscillating. And then gradually, as it moves away from that buffer zone, um, it moves out to these uh, significant regions which are being tested now. So the first thing is to consider those levels as potential target opportunities of S5 and S6. It's very different to the often um, uh, used risk and reward approach whereby people say, well, you know, if you're going to put a risk of 10 on the table, you should be looking at a reward of 20 or 30. In other words, two to one or three to one or whatever it is. I'm afraid it's nonsense. What you have to use is what the price chart is telling you because what it will tell you is the extent of any potential opportunity that the market may or may not deliver based on that particular time frame and that particular instrument. It's as simple as that. It's nothing to the market doesn't care whether you have to have a comfort blanket of three to one or four to one or whatever it may be. The market delivers what it will deliver. If it's 10 pips, fine. If it's 20 pips, fine. If it's 30, whatever it is. But it will be dictated by all manner of things, not least of all VPA, but of course, these levels. The levels that are constantly changing, either based on price or based on volume, one or the other. And those are the levels that are so important. So the way to use the camera is two ways. First of all, as look at it in terms of potential target area for a, an opportunity. And this is a classic example where we're moving to S5, F6, S6. So that's you know, delivering however many pips it's delivering. The other way of using the indicator is to set your stop loss level so to, to wherever the price action is you look at those regions for example if you were looking at this as a long position maybe at, at uh, you know and on a different time frame whatever it may be if you thought this market was going to reverse then you might use the s5 s6 levels as your potential stop loss for example on the long position so it it just offers many different ways of utilizing it and indeed the videos we explain all this in a lot more detail so I just wanted to highlight it. Anna's back now, so I'm just going to pass back. Brilliant. Thanks, darling. Um, now, what's also very cool about this indicator is um, 
is that I'm looking at the 60-minute chart here. Now, the levels that are on the 60-minute chart are, have actually been calculated to remain on this chart until the end of the week. And what that means is when I move down to a faster time frame, so if I move down, say, to the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the three-minute chart, <coughs> We, you will see we are looking at very, very different levels. We have got these. These are calculated on a daily basis. So they, they are uh, refreshed at the start of the, uh, of the session, which is about 10 o'clock in, in the evening, our, our time. So these change on a daily basis. But what that tells you is, is how that helps you is when you are looking to take a, a position uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the faster time frames, you need to know the the levels that are key on the slower time frame. And they will also help to uh, confirm or and confirm to you that when a price reaches a significant point, as we have seen on the 60 minute chart, you will know why it stopped. And the chances are it possibly could reverse. And you can see here that, in fact, the price dropped into what we call the buffer or this neutral zone, which is basically a, a consolidation phase, as we can see here. And it's now bouncing off this R1. So what the R1 is telling you is that it's found a platform of support at uh, 32, uh, 3217, something like that. And it's now looking to move higher. And what it also gives you the confidence to do is if the slower time frame is showing maybe, as this is, a bearish picture, the dollar cad has been, has been bearish, and you're on the faster time frames and you want to take a counter trend trade, uh, than what is on the slower time frame, it will give you the confidence to take that because we've seen on the 60 minute, we said the R4 is hugely significant from, for all sorts of reason, all sorts of reason. I'll just wait for that to, uh, to repopulate and break. And we can see here it's provided some strong support. So knowing that the dollar CAD overall has been bearish, I'm short the dollar CAD. I've been short uh, since the basket uh, since the basket uh, went uh, went on. But down on the faster time frames, given that that's given me this strong support line, I look at the three minute chart and I think, yeah, you know, that's my that's potentially a good point of entry. Now I know well, where is it heading for. Well, this is the R2. That's the next. That's the first potential target. And then I've got the R3 here. And together with the Camarilla, um, the Renko, as we can see here. This is the congestion phase that we have been uh, watching and monitoring since the market opened. And now this has actually gone to bright blue. And where is this price heading? Well, on here we have the VPOC. We have it at, I will uh, roughly, is it 132, 132.33, something like that. That is also another area of, uh, of, of resistance. So, we know we can that if it does manage to to carry on higher, this is where it is likely to stop. And looking back again at the uh, where are we on the Camarilla? Let's look at the volumes that are underneath. And in fact, it stopped. It was the it was uh, the R2. It got to the R2 and it stopped. And now it's going back to down to the R1. And we'll see. So knowing having these levels on your chart having their significance, the importance of these levels in the different time frames allows you to have a much more complete picture of what the price action is doing and what it is likely to do. And you can then factor that in to the time frame uh, that you actually want to trade or you know, take a trading opportunity, and whether that is on the faster time frames or as I said, I'm on this slightly, uh, well, I, medium term, as it were. And I've just looked at the heat map. Has it gone? Has my heat map gone? Ha, it's disappeared. I can't believe it. I had, oh, there it is. It's disappeared. There we are. And the heat map, as I said, I originally selected these pairs based on what I had seen at the time on the heat map. And <clears throat> at the time, all the yen pairs 
were at the bottom of the heat map because we'd had this, you know, this swoon in the market. Uh, if you remember, we had the flash crash last week. Was it last week? Yeah, last week. Yeah. And uh, equities were selling off again. So they were all right. They were all heavily, heavily oversold. And it was really a question of deciding which of the yen pairs I particularly wanted to take a trade in. And I opted, as I said, I've opted for the Aussie yen, which is at spot 22 now. And I opted for the CAD yen, which is now actually dropped down uh, back down to uh, 24, but and has been slightly overtaken by the Aussie yen. And at the top, I shorted the uh, Euro CAD, and I could have chosen the Euro, uh, the Euro Aussie, but I chose the, uh, the or even the pound uh, uh, Aussie, but I chose the Euro CAD, and I chose the dollar CAD as well. And what I use the heat map for is not only to help me with the initial not selection, but it just highlights you know, what is happening in the market at this particular time in terms of ranking of the 28 pairs. Is there, you know, go and have a look at the at, at the charts. Depending on the time frame that you're looking to trade, you can even look at it this from a, a, a faster, in an intraday basis, because often you will see when something is very oversold and something or something is very overbought, it's that you may have an opportunity to trade it counter in the faster time frames. And then what I use this for is very much as a, as a monitoring. I know where I entered, where they were on the positions, and it also is a quick way. I don't have to look at all the charts. If if my pair was at spot 24, as this is now when I entered, and I go and look at it again, and it's at spot 15, well, I know it's gone up. So, you know, as I said, it's just a, if, if you're as time poor as I am, it's just a great way of, uh, of keeping, uh, you know, having a heads up of what's happening on the chart. I'm just going to pass over to David. As I said, if you want more information, before I do so, if you want information on any of the indicators that we're, we're talking about, uh, what we've actually done is we've refreshed the front page of uh, the quantum trading site, as we can see here, it's much more intuitive. Uh, we have so much information on this site. In fact, it's, it can be a little bit overwhelming and it was getting quite difficult to navigate around it. So we've tried to simplify it as much as possible. As you can see here, these are the indicators for Ninja. There are uh, explanations of what they are, but more importantly, you can go down to the bottom and there's a scroll bar with each individual indicator. And this is new. You click on the ind ind indicator itself. Hopefully it'll uh, load. I'm just waiting for it. And what we've actually done is we've collated the various <coughs> videos that, uh, that David has done for the indicator. And it will play both for MT4 uh, and there's obviously Ninja Trader as well. So it just makes it much easier to navigate and to actually find the inf information on the site much more easily and explains in more detail how you use not just the, the heat map but other indicators as well. Right, I'll just pass over to David because uh, my all well, my positions are a bit desultory at the moment. So, back to the heat map for a minute. Uh, which one? Back to the heat map. Yeah. No problem. There we are. There we are. Turn myself on. Brilliant. Just wanted to go back to the heat map for a moment because um, it's really interesting that uh, what's happening at the moment is we are starting. I mentioned earlier on that we'd seen uh, the pound selling off heavily. In fact, you can see it bottom right there. Um, it's been pretty much selling off uh, throughout uh, the London session. And as Anna mentioned at the start of this, what we often see at session crossovers is this reversal in sentiment. Reversals. This market is all about mean reversion. You know, these currencies constantly move from oversold to overbought and back again for many, many different reasons. But what we're starting to see now, and I've got it on the pound Aussie, I've got a really nice uh, reversal going on on the pound Aussie, which was flagged up on the CSI on five minute. What we're starting to see now is a move in terms of some buying of the pound coming in. Um, not perhaps so strongly against the Aussie, but it's certainly there. And you can see it. And what's the nice thing with the heat map as well, you can actually see it here visually. You can see it on the one minute, the five minute, the 10, the 15. You can see that bullish sentiment down at the bottom of the chart. And certainly the four ranked at the bottom there, the uh, cable, pound Swiss, pound New Zealand, pound yen. You can see those cells starting to turn green. And as that continues, clearly, as you look over to the right hand side of the heat map, you know, those currency pairs from the four hourly out to the monthly are all very bearish. 
If that is a longer term change in trend, then obviously those cells in the slower time frames will gradually turn green. But what we're seeing right now is a strong move in the intraday scalping time frame, if you will, where those cells are turning green. And it's just another aspect. Perhaps it's self-evident, but when you're looking at the heat map in this way, it just gives you a, a really clear visual picture of what is going on, particularly those currencies of the extremes, those of which have been very strongly bullish or very strongly bearish. And then you start to see the the change in color from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish as those cells reflect it. So it's a really, really cool way of using the heat map. And I would I would urge you, if you for those of you who have the indicators, I know we've got quite a few people on the call who have the quantum indicators. I would urge you to to just view it in this way. Um, because it is a powerful indicator. Let, let me just switch over to, to my side and I'll pull up the pound Aussie. You can see what I've been uh, rabbiting on about. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's coming up. Got the thumbs up from Anna. Brilliant. Um, a, a range of time frames. We've got the 5, the 10, the 15 at the top, and then down at the bottom we've got the 30. We've got the uh, – this is the Renko. Uh, which is set, I think, on one minute, but I'll just double check that in a minute, and then we're over onto the daily on the right-hand side. And really, all of that was reflected off the currency strength indicator, which I've got over here. Um, you can see this was where we were at, I don't know, this was 12, 12, 30 into 1 o'clock. Very strong selling of the pound, so very oversold. Equally, the Aussie up here. Now, the Aussie, sorry, oversold for the pound and overbought for the Aussie. Now, what's interesting right now is what's driving the move in the pound Aussie is n really nothing to do with what's going on in terms of the Aussie. It's all to do with what's going on in terms of the pound. So what you're looking at in terms of a potential reversal here, which is what certainly one thing I had my eye on, which is why I had the pound Aussie up, looking at this as an opportunity for reversal. Whilst we've had the reversal, it is a one-sided reversal. It's an asymmetric reversal. In other words, it's been driven purely through the buying of the pound and nothing to do with selling of the Aussie, which continues to remain up here on the ceiling. Now, at some point, obviously, the Aussie is going to roll. From a trading perspective, just going back to the charts, absolutely nothing wrong with the trade. Where are we? There we go. Absolutely nothing wrong with taking that trade. But in taking that trade, just be aware of the fact that what's driving this is the only the pound. It's not the Aussie. And if you were looking at the CSI, then possibly a better trade might be the pound dollar, for example, where you've got the pound rising and you've got the dollar falling. So it's all a question of teasing out all this information. The actual reversal, it was flagged. I mean, we saw it on in, from a price and volume perspective. We had the candles forming here. All of them had lower wicks. We had a lower wick to this one, and then we had the further lower wick here, which really triggered the whole thing. And to isolate out this volume over here, we've got some pretty high volume. I've done this many times before. But if you pull that over, it just gives you a sense of the related volume that is coming into this particular market. And what we're seeing here, this was the first hammer to form. Nice volume under there, falling away a little bit, but nevertheless, narrow spread, deep wick. Then we're starting to see the buying drive in. All of this is accumulation volume, and it's just classical price action where a market has fallen. This was weakness, tried to rally, fell back, decent volume. Then we get the buying coming in on the next candle, then some more buying. It's absorbing. The market makers are absorbing the selling pressure. They're taking the sting out of the market and they're preparing for a rally. And of course, you would see that reflected across all the various time frames, from the fastest to the slowest. In terms of the indicators themselves, what we're also seeing here is a really nice example. Again, it's all down to moving from the fastest time frame out to the slowest time frame. On the five minute, what have we got? We've got the trend monitor, which has transitioned through into uh, bullish. So we've gone from full bearish to full bullish now in terms of going back to what we we're talking about earlier in terms of price resistance price support we're running into a region here in terms of pretty uh, heavy price resistance on this blue line we've got further blue uh, resistance here 
on this level. These are the levels that the dash, the red dash lines are fairly minor, but these are the main ones to concentrate on this level here and this level here. And above that, we've got the volume point of control with yet more price resistance above. From a volume based perspective, we're in a reasonably light area of volume. It's not uh, that heavy. This is the heaviest concentration around the VPOC. So in terms of developing this move, which is really all it's about, it's trying to make a judgment call on this particular trading opportunity has <coughs> opportunities per se, but what is the risk? And the risk associated right now is, first of all, this move is purely being driven by the pound right now. That may change in the next few minutes. Who can say? But at the moment, it's purely being driven by the pound. And secondly, we've got quite a lot of price resistance overhead, which may cause this market to pause. So it's all it's all a judgment call as to you know is that a trading position that you're comfortable to take? It's probably a little bit higher risk than a conventional uh, um, symmetrical uh, driven price move, whereby you've got rising and falling currencies. You've got strength in one and weakness in the other. So it's an interesting example of really teasing apart all the aspects of how to make a trading decision. Are you comfortable with making that trading decision? If it's high risk, that's fine, as long as you're comfortable taking on higher risk. If not, you know, pass on to something else. And going back to, let's just pull that back. It looks a bit, bit odd like that. Let's just move that back to a normal size. There we go. <coughs> just going back to our CSI, for example. Let's go back to the CSI. Where are we? There we go. Um, in terms of trading opportunities, this strong buying in the pound, where, it's, where is it going to be reflected just as strongly but with equal weakness to the other side? Well, you'd certainly see it in the yen right now because the yen's diving quite strongly. Uh, the red line, the dollar also, uh, possibly the Swiss franc. But the problem with the Swiss franc, it's very, very oversold. But you'd certainly see a strong trend there. And you've got the Canadian dollar here, which is which is selling off. So any of these, and it's just crossing there as well, so any of those would be a potential opportunity and perhaps carry less risk than looking at the pound Aussie because, in effect, the pound and the Aussie are rising together, although the Aussie is flatlining. But all this strength and momentum is being driven purely through the pound for whatever reason. And I've got this on the, on the matrix. You can see the pound Aussie is pretty much down here at the bottom, starting to, to gain some traction now, starting to see that buying coming through on this uh, slower time frame and over, sorry, on the array and over onto the matrix, a similar sort of position where we've seen heavy selling. We're now starting to see that change and we're starting to see that, that buying coming. You can see it here, very strong on the Swiss franc and the yen and the Canadian and the dollar. And this is the one we're looking at, which is the pound Aussie, which is a long way off the strongest pair that is currently uh, trending. So it, it really just reinforces the point I'm making that when you're looking at a currency, a, a trading opportunity, it's teasing apart all the various aspects of it to try and identify which is like to give you the best opportunity for the lowest risk. And that's really all trading is about. Can you just pass that to me, right? Yeah, sure. Um, I just wanted to have a look again at the um, at the uh, dollar Canadian and in particular the daily chart because this is um, uh, this is where it's got some fantastic uh, VPA lessons and also it uh, coincides with the last week's uh, NFP and the Powell statement was it not statement he was on he was on some sort of it was an event with Bernanke and Yellen, wasn't he, on Friday afternoon? Yeah. And that's when we really had the, uh, the strong, strong sell-off of the US dollar when he basically came in and uh, he came and kind of wrote, didn't kind of, he did row back on the very hawkish stance that he had taken on the December the 19th at the um, <clears throat> when they raised interest rates. But let's have a look at these three candles here going towards the top of uh, this chart. And I... Okay, bearing in mind the time of year, seasonality. But what's really nice is 
purely from a VPA perspective, we've had a we've had a really nice move higher off. Let's take it from this point here off the uh, the volume point of control. We had a little uh, a pullback here, and then we had a, a as I said, that is a really really nice trend on the daily chart. But the last three candles that we have here, first of all, we had a candle with a whip wick at the top of the candle on very high volume what does that tell you that tells you that this market is trying to move higher it's trying to sustain uh, uh the uh, the higher prices but it falls back the sellers are coming in but it's the only one signal and we talked about in a, in a previous session how with vpa you can get very strong signals and they can come in a little bit too they can come in a little bit too early. We have, and the temptation with volume, with signals, with volume price analysis signals, if we can say, oh, fantastic, I'm going to jump in and, and you know, that's it. This, this is my entry signal or my exit signal. But you do have to be a, a little bit patient. And next day, we had this candle here. Again, it's an up candle, wick to the top, wick to the bottom. And the volume is falling. So if you like, that kind of says, yeah, OK, it really doesn't look as though the price is going to go any any higher. And in fact, it it, it didn't. We also had, uh, well, it didn't at the time, but we had this little sort of, uh, what is that, David? A, do a little doji candle? A little doji candle. There's not very little volume underneath it. But the, the, the purpose of these three candles is, first of all, we have the initial weakness, and then we have the volume draining away. Now, I... We did talk about seasonality and how, you know, we have the liquidity has been, you know, lower as, as it were. But th those three candles with, with that profile, that is a fairly big warning sign. And then I think that is Wednesday FP. That's today's Thursday, isn't it? Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday. That's Thursday. In fact, the the sell off in the in the dollar started off in the, at the really at the start of, of the new trading week and what's nice here is we did have a rollover we had a wick to the top of that candle on reasonable volume then we had this candle with a ton of volume underneath it very tall wick to the top very deep body and it fell and it kept, and it kept falling as i said after nfp as well and this is where we are at the moment this is the uh, so it has fallen below the vpox and from my perspective that i'm short this is good news for me because this is a very strong uh, area of resistance now it could actually simply continue sideways and rotate around the volume point of control and frustrate me uh, because I'm hoping that it's going to go further. But what it also tells me is where is it likely to go to? And I've got 3150 here, which is the next logical stopping point or support point for this pair. But if we look at the going back to the this is as I said, these levels stay on the Camarilla for the next week for the rest of this week and I look at the S5 and where is the S5? The S5 is actually just below the 3150 but not by by very much. So if this breaks through here versus this level here, I've got a pretty good idea of where I think it is going to run to and where potentially if this is coming to the end of the week and it manages to get anywhere near there then possibly i'm thinking well do you know what i've uh, i've had some nice pips out of this i'll just close out but i just wanted to highlight that because it had vpa lessons on the slower time frame and also puts into context the uh, the price action we see at the moment on the day which is this little candle here it's got a wick to the upside not a lot of volume underneath it so my feeling is based on that let's see if it, if it can carry on lower i've only got one more day which is tomorrow is there anything you want to say about that david or are you happy with that no, no. that's it okay can i move back to you then is that all right or is that it are we at the um <clears throat> i just turn myself off hold on Just switching back onto my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Put the array there. Now let's just go over to the, there we go, back over here. And as you can see, we've reached a bit of a pause point, which um, let's just pop that up full size. I've got the five minute, there we go. Um, running into these regions, we've got some 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 price resistance overhead there. And bear in mind, as I said, this is this is only being driven. Let's just go back to the CSI on the five minute. 
Let's just go back here. Here we go. Sorry, that's on 15. Let's go down. Let's just take this down to, let's just go to 10 minutes, see what's happening on the 10 minute. Um, the Aussie is, is, it's moving, but it's not moving, you know, as quickly as you would expect. For this to develop into a really nice position, you really want to see this moving quite strongly. And, and if you were looking at a pair such as the pound yen, in fact, let's just flip this, uh, flip the whole lot over onto the pound yen. Let's just go back here. Just type this in here, GBP, JBY. There we go. That should change them all. They're all linked. There we go. We've had a much stronger uh, development of the trend on the pound yen, certainly in terms of the five, the ten. Uh, it's it it's reaching a pause point in the same way that it is on the pound Aussie, but you've had a longer run at it. So it's it just reinforces the point. You're just pulling apart all these various aspects. This is the Renko. Just fantastic to use in combination with the time-based charts. Use exactly the same indicators. We've got the trend monitor running. We've got the trend dots. They work brilliantly with it. You've got the pivots there. We've got the support and resistance here. You can see we've hit this region here. So it, but what it does is it 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 smooths out the the price action into a a neater chart, if you will, built purely of bricks. And the way the bricks are built. This is the Renko Optimizer, and it actually delivers the optimal setting for you at any time of the trading session and for any instrument. So if we just click on the one minute for a moment, you can choose any time frame. I tend to choose the one minute or the two minute, and it's very different. You can see it was on 47. It's now on 18. We'll just click that. That will actually open the, um, the Renko chart again. Sorry, let's just click on it again. There we go. Okay, so it's now changed. It was, I think it was 48. It's now come down to 37. And what that means is that the optimal brick size for the pound yen right now in this trading session is 37. It doesn't mean 37 pips. It just means 3.7 pips. So each of these bricks will be worth 3.7 pips. And it just delivers the optimal setting because if you think of it logically, choosing a brick size is... It's pretty hit and miss, really. What do you, how do you choose it? Do you go two, three, one, one and a half? What is it? So what the optimizer does, it actually does all the calculation for you because those optimal settings change throughout the trading day. The best setting for a Renko brick size in the Far East and Asia will be very, very different to the London session, which again will be different to the US session because the markets are more volatile, there's more liquidity, and 26 different reasons. So it's not one size fits all. You can't trade the same brick size throughout a 24 hour period. It will vary continuously. It's exactly the same principles we apply to the tick speedometer, where tick settings change throughout the session. Globex, they're very low. As soon as the cash markets open, they spike enormously. So it's just a question of setting your charts to the optimal setting. It's all about managing risk and trying to factor out those aspects of it that remove or reduce the risk. And one of the risks is, is just guessing settings for tick charts, for Renko charts, whatever they may be. It just takes that risk level down a notch or two and gives you the best chance of success in turn, whatever it is you're trading at whatever at the time of day. Let's just pop that down. There we go. We're at the pause point And, you know, just to round off and go back to almost where we started, Got the volatility triggered again. Here it is. We're on the five minute here. Bang, up it goes. You can imagine, you can feel traders thinking, fantastic, I'm going to jump in here. You know, the market spikes suddenly, up it goes, whoosh, you know, 10, 15, 20 pips in a very short space of time. They jump in. Now what's happening? Trader regress is kicking in. Fear. Have I done the right thing? Why did I do that? Why did I jump in so quickly? And now I've got to sit through this. Ultimately, this market may indeed continue higher, but the pain of sitting through this will take its toll, partially through being stopped out anyway, but partially also through the emotion that is then ground out in terms of sitting through a move that's going sideways and actually looks as though it's going in the opposite direction. So that's the 
you know, the market makers use this all the time. It is a classic tool they use in every single time frame in all markets. So please, 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 if you don't have the volatility indicator, get it because it will keep you out of trouble. And if you're in a position and it's triggered, you've got a decision to make. Do I stay in? Do I get out? But at least you know. I'm going to pass back to Anna. We'll wrap up. And I've just moved over to the Aussie again. I just wanted to see what was happening there. Actually, not a lot. Looking at the uh, at, at the daily chart, if I, I just pull that up, this is where I'm long this one as well. It is a very very narrow slither of uh, of, of, uh, of price action that we're looking. I think the market's all generally. I think that there's a lot of Fed people speaking today, and there's also Powell coming along. He's at another event, and um, he, it's some economic get together. Uh, a but like a bit like my one, yes, in, in January, that should be fun. Um, but what's interesting about that, and just something to be aware of if you're if you are going to be trading around five o'clock our time, and that is he is taking um, questions, he's taking audience questions. Now, of course, you know it could be planted the questions as it were, so you know the right answers are are delivered. But it's one of those events where it does have a, a degree of uh, uncertainty in, in terms of what he may or may not say. So just be aware of that. Uh, he is around at uh, f five o'clock our time today. Right. Just very, very quickly. David mentioned the uh, uh, the VPOC. Again, back to the, the pages that we have re reconfigured at Quantum Trading makes it so much easier. Uh, to find I, from the you can drop onto the front page, all the indicators are, in, are uh, list. You can see them on a slider. Just click on the slider, and it just everything. All the um, all the videos explaining how the indicator can works, how you can apply it in your own trading. Because with both with volume price analysis and with the indicators, we make no uh, bones about it. You can integrate these into whatever method or whatever system you have been using up until now, whatever your trading tactics have been uh, up until now, VPA and con the quantum uh, indicators, what it does, it strengthens them. We have traders who use Bollinger Bands. We have traders who use Fibonacci. We have traders who use Elliott Wave. And the, uh, the, the feedback we get from these traders is that what it has done, it has helped them. It has, it has made their, their tactics, um, it has given them extra confidence in their tactics and validated their tactics. So it's not a case of, you know, hey, this is VPA, this is quantum. It's either our way or the highway. Absolutely not at all. And whether you just buy one indicator uh, or you buy a bundle or you buy a um, a um, the, the complete package it's really very much up to you you, you can many of our traders start with one it's always um you know we have emails from people coming back after four years who've actually been out of the market and have said oh you know their new year's resolution has been to come back into trading and the indicator is still there and you know it's re-enabled uh maybe they've changed machines or something so as i said it's uh it's one thing about our indicators that people who do buy them, they do have them for life and they are yours for life. And what is also uh, that's slightly very different is that if you buy the, the complete package, you invest in the complete package. Um, when we develop new indicators, they are automatically added to your package. You don't have to pay us any more money. And as you can see here, I know we've been talking about Ninja Trader. Uh, the Trading View indicators are available now, and uh, they all they run on Mac and uh, Android and and sort of iOS uh, devices. So um, as I said, a, a fairly comprehensive uh, suite which you can explore in more detail at uh, QuantumTrading.com. Um, with regards to the books, you can find them here. Details on my site. These are the individual ones. And these are all the box sets that we've put together. This is the Forex Trading Library, as I said, which really covers everything that we have been talking about today. And finally, if 
step further from the indicators, we've put everything together in the complete Forex trading program, and that is at this site, Quantum Trading Education. This is us, we're not here at the moment, we're somewhere else, and these are the modules, five very comprehensive modules, lots and lots of videos, lots and lots of PDFs, uh, webinars, resources, everything that you need to know, in our opinion, to make a success of this incredibly complex but incredibly fascinating market. And finally, if you want to get in contact with us, all you have to do is just quickly, you can either drop me a line at Anna at AnnaCooling.com or David at QuantumTrading.com on anything that you've heard today. So thank you very much for coming along. David is waving goodbye. Apologies about Harry and Bertie. We'll try and keep them under better control. They are getting, they are very grumpy old men these days, I'm afraid, the pair of them, and they don't like their territory being invaded. So um, if you're joining us later, great, we'll be looking at the indices. I don't think there's much going on though, David, is there? So I'm just a, having a look now. Yes, David's having a look at the YM and, um, and yeah. the NASDAQ and, and the S. Oh, trading in a slither. I think they're all, mind you, has, has the China thing. There's supposed to be some joint communique from China and the US about the, the trade talks. I'm not sure if that's actually come out yet. Maybe that's all. But anyway, I'm sure we'll find something uh, to look at. And uh, so if you're coming along to that, great. Otherwise, we will see you, catch you next time. Take care.